This video is sponsored by Mel Science. Hey guys, before you watch the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Here's your video. I really like to make sure that even in the school year's over, that our brains are active over the summer, that we're not only retaining all of the knowledge that we gained during the school year, but that we're challenging ourselves and continuing to learn during the summer. Another way we like to keep our minds active over the summer is to take lots of trips to the library and get lots of interesting books to read. Sometimes I get in my head that learning has to look so structured, but I forget just how much kids learn just by being outside in nature. A gecko, it's alive! A gecko, what? While summer is officially here, our school year has ended, so you might be wondering, what are we doing in our home school room this morning? What are you up to, Addy? I'm doing my morning work folder, so like every morning we have to do three like different packets, and then we can do whatever we want. She's right, as a teacher, as a homeschool mom, I really like to make sure that even though the school year is over, that our brains are active over the summer, that we're not only retaining all of the knowledge that we gained during the school year, but that we're challenging ourselves and continuing to learn during the summer. So I have something that my kids do every morning, well, I should say every weekday morning during the summer. So we have to do daily math, daily paragraph editing, and daily language review. Their morning work is designed just to take about 15 minutes. It's really quick, but it helps review some of those core concepts that we learned, is especially math and grammar during the year, that I don't want them to forget during the summer. Now once they finish their morning work, then the TV, the tablets, playing with friends, all the fun can happen. What else is in your folder behind our daily checklist, Maya? We have reading logs. Like we have a June reading log and a July one. Mm-hmm. The girls set a goal for how many minutes they are hoping to read each month and each day they record how many minutes they completed. We add it all up and see if they beat their goal each month. All right, we're just a few days in. How many minutes have you read, Addie? I've read 90 minutes, including yesterday and the day before yesterday. I haven't read anything yet today, though. And what's your goal for the month? 300 minutes. <laughs> I think you're gonna beat that in the first week. <laughs> Learning doesn't always have to look like sitting at a desk with a pencil in hand and doing worksheets. And in fact, I think that most of us, me included, prefer it not look like that. Today we are so thankful and super excited that Mel Science has offered to let us test out their subscription service, which offers monthly science boxes. These boxes combine hands-on experiments with VR and AR technologies to engage kids in studying science. So what are you guys looking at right now? Addie's working on electron orbitals. Electron orbitals? Whoa, can I try, can I try looking, Addie? Yes. Okay, let me have a, let me have a chance to look. Oh. oh, wow. I see electrons and protons. There are a few varieties of subscription boxes you can order. There are Mel Physics boxes. There's the Mel Kids, which has a lot of fun STEM projects, and Mel Chemistry. And I think today we're going to check out one of the Mel Chemistry kits. So girls, who's ready for some chemistry? Me! All right, it's time for chemistry. And as we break out this chemistry box, I think you're gonna see how Mel Science is really breaking that stereotype that science is boring, that it's difficult, and that it's only for certain people. All right, see the starter kit. Ooh. Ooh. This is cool. Cool safety goggles. <laughs> So this is our chemistry starter kit, which has Ooh. everything Ooh. we should need for our chemistry experiments. Fun. So here's the kit we're going to do today, and this is on tin. Ooh. Do you even know much about tin, Addie? No. <laughs> I don't either, but we're gonna learn a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So do you guys wanna do the tin hedgehog or the tin dendrite? 
Hedgehog. Hedgehog? Yes. Sounds good. Normally, I'm the one who's leading all of our homeschool lessons. I'm the teacher in the family, but Jason really gets into anything math or science related. So it's super fun to see Jason having this time to bond with the girls and learn something together. First, prepare the tin chloride solution. Now enter the tip securely and the red cap. Shake, 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 Maya. shake, 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 shake. Doing this together with my family reminds me that science is really all about exploration, experimentation, and discovery. And these are all things that come really naturally to kids. Sometimes as adults, we make science seem so much more intimidating and scary than it actually is. When kids just wanna get in there and experiment, learn, and have fun. So what are we doing now, Addie? For step two, we have to submerge a piece of more active metal, zinc, in the tin salt solution and see what happens. Ooh, what do we think is gonna happen? I think it's gonna fizz up. You do? I think it's gonna become like the hedgehog thing. The tin hedgehog, that, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out. I think it's gonna fizz up and then start turning into the hedgehog. There are spikes on it. Oh, whoa. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. That's pretty neat. Oh, wow. So the tin particles don't just settle all over the place randomly, they prefer a certain way of sitting next to each other, and mm -hmm. chemists call this crystal structure. Oh yeah. That's why the tin forms elegant needles and doesn't cover the zinc pellet evenly. It kind of spikes oh, out. That's cool. Here's the macro footage of what oh, just yeah. happened. Check that out. Oh, that's neat. That's what that's happened so right inside there. Let's do tin dendrite now. Tin dendrite. Ready for the next experiment? Yeah! Okay, let's go! Each subscription box comes with two to three experiments. They are completely safe, they have been thoroughly tested, and you'll have everything you need to complete the experiment inside the box, apart from any common household items. That's so cool. Guys, look, it's forming. How did it do it? No idea. Yeah, you can see it right there. They're, they're growing. So the electrons from the batteries causes a chemical reaction, one of the products of which is metallic tin, and that's what we're seeing. One of the many perks of these subscription boxes is that they come with free online lessons with actual science teachers. So you can go online and complete your science experiments with a trained professional who is there to answer any questions you may have. To learn more about Mel Science, check out the link in our description box. And don't forget to use promo code TICTACTOY to get 50% off of your first subscription box. But the promo code is only good for three days, so move quickly. Another way we like to keep our minds active over the summer is to take lots of trips to the library and get lots of interesting books to read. And the girls have really enjoyed the last few summers picking out their own topic that they'd like to research and learn more about. Might remember the last topic you came to the library to learn more about was what? Do you remember? Um, snakes. Snakes? What do you think you're gonna learn about house. today? Um, I think I'm gonna do like a lot of type of animals. I don't really know yet, but some type of animals sound Can interesting. Peruse the books and find out exactly what you want. Addie, is there a topic that interests you? Yes, horses. Horses, I'm not surprised. So we're not gonna be writing reports on this information or giving presentations. This is more about picking a topic that interests you, something that you're curious about, and just having some fun exploring, having some fun learning, and keeping that love of learning alive. <laughs> So one thing I think I need to study is the Dewey Decimal System. I, I can never remember where to find things in the library. But here we want to learn about okay, so animals. There's no animal section. All right, there's cats. Dogs. Oh, dogs, J636.7. Okay. Ooh, earthquakes would be something interesting to study. Yeah. Horses. Guinea pigs and gerbils. Oh, horses oh. for Addie, you're right. right. I think this is where Addie needs to be. All right, horses, horses should be right around here. Horses, we found the horses, yay! These are like sea animals and owls and crocodiles and dinosaurs and jellyfish and butterflies. <laughs> well, what are we thinking? What are we gonna narrow it down thinking to? thinking species of dogs, because I so love types dogs. types of breeds of dogs? Yeah. You do love your puppies? Yeah. All right, so dogs. 
right here. I also found this vet book. Oh, a vet people, book? Yeah, oh, about like people healing like dogs and stuff. It's not horse related, but it's very interesting, so I might take it. I think Maya should research hound dogs. Sandy. That's what Sandy is. She's a hound dog. Maya, I think you might grow up to be a veterinarian. Yeah. Have you already parked yourself down and have opened your books? Yep. How many books are you going to get? Just three. Just three? Yeah, because I still have some other books I need to read at home. So in your few minutes of reading, have you learned anything new? Well, a filly is a young female horse under the age of four, and a mare is an older female horse. And yeah. So what would BB be, a filly or a mare? Probably a mare. <laughs> this looks like a good book. Why do dogs drool? Yeah. Maybe they're hungry. St. Bernard's and Newfoundland's drool a lot. I really want a St. Bernard. I don't think Daddy's gonna let me get a St. Bernard. Yeah. Because they drool too much. But they're so cute. <laughs> Why do dogs circle before they sleep? That's a good question. Oh well, yeah. Have you seen Sandy do that? Yeah. Whenever she lays down on the couch, <laughs> she like turns around. <laughs> she does. She lays down. Well, we've got books for Addie, we have books for Maya, I picked up a few books for Colin as well. And speaking of Colin, we're gonna go pick him up now from a creek playdate. Is there a fish in there? Oh my gosh, look, there's like a crab thing. A crab thing. Where, where, where? Wow! Right there, right there. Oh, oh my gosh, there's like a there is. Oh wow, what is that? It's a crawdad. Are there more, Maya? I got one Addie put in with the mommy. A gecko, it's alive! A gecko, what? Oh, what is that? Well, I don't know if that's a gecko, but it's- It's a lizard what? guy. <gasps> Ooh. Hi, mommy. We have three. I think that is a salamander. Colin, what do you think that is inside there? Oh, he's touching it. He's touching it. He's touching mommy. it. <laughs> what do you think it is? Ah, they're so slimy! Ew! <laughs> it moved. I was touching them like, I'm like ah! Is it your friend? Uh -huh. Maybe he was like. We are so fortunate to live next to a beautiful creek, which offers so much open-ended learning and exploration, right outside in beautiful nature. Look at all the beautiful, like river shells there are here. There are so many shells here. Maya's calling me. She's over here along the river bed or the creek bed, I guess and she found something cool she wants to show me. Oh, I didn't use, oh, I didn't wear the best shoes for this mud. <laughs> this will be the best place because the fishes, they will come deeper and over here so that they will feel more safer. So this would be a way better place to catch them. To catch some other fish? Yeah. Are you still carrying around your friend, Colin? Yeah. He went on your arm? Uh -huh. We have to name your little buddy. Okay. He be named Kevin. Kevin. Oh, he's so soft. I kind of wish I could keep him. <laughs> Please, I think Colin his down. home is in the creek. Sometimes I get in my head that learning has to look so structured and I have to have a lesson plan and an objective, but I forget just how much kids learn just by being outside in nature, by getting a little muddy, by touching things that maybe us as grown-ups don't want to touch because it seems icky and yucky and slimy, but they learn so much just by interacting with nature and I definitely want to have a lot of this type of learning this summer. Oh, you have your own little creatures over here. You've got yep. the mama you said, I think this is the mom? Mm -hmm. Ooh. And I have her babies in there, <laughs> so we better put her back in. What are you looking for, Maya? Minnows. I love trying to catch minnows because I think it's so fun and challenging trying to catch... <gasps> crab, crab, crab! <laughs> go, Addie, go! Why is Addie wading through the water? Because of the... Because what did you do? Did you throw a shovel in the water and Addie had to go find it? Hey, <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah. Can I the fish that I saw was big enough to be a catfish. You saw a big fish in there? Yeah. <laughs> How cool. Colin wants to go see the fish too. Thank 
you so much for joining us today. I encourage you to learn this summer, explore, create, and most of all, make sure you're having fun while you're doing so. We'll see you guys next time. XOXO, bye! This video is sponsored by Mel Science.